Hi everyone, so in the first episode of the Sanctuary of the Self, we have seen this shift from a need-based consumer culture, right, mass culture, to a desire-based consumer culture that occurred uh, beginning in the 1940s and 50s um, up until the 1960s. And then the third episode of the, uh, this four-part documentary uh, focuses um, on the rise of the countercultural self. And the countercultural self rejects uh, consumerism, rejects the 9 to 5 uh, job, uh, rejects uh, self discipline and self repression. And we see in the documentary how this is a move that begins in the late 60s, actually early 70s, in response to the actual repression by the government of the social movements uh, in the country so that a lot of individuals begin to think that it is not possible to change the system through a direct confrontation through um, a direct political confrontation but that it is necessary to change yourself individually so as to be able to change uh, the system collectively and uh, we see also how advertisers begin to get worried that these new non-consuming selves um, are going to um, eventually affect the whole society and capitalism is ultimately going to collapse uh, insofar as it is not able to market its products anymore and so uh, as they've done with Bernays in the in the um, uh, 30s and 40s and 50s they turn to psychological research in order uh, to figure out how to market product, uh, products to this new brand of non-consuming selves. And, um, and what they find out is actually that the political response is perhaps not the primary concern of these individuals, but uh, that the new social movements of the counterculture of the late 60s and also the early 70s are actually demanding more individual self-expression that we see, uh, for example, through the EST, uh, EST uh, workshops. And um, they also demand more uh, communalism. So, for example, uh, the, night, uh, sorry, the Coke commercial uh, I like to buy the world a Coke, uh, which um, uh, Mai posted um, uh, yesterday, uh, is really trying uh, to capture the aspiration um, uh, for living communally with people of all races in peace and harmony. Where, of course, what allows for this harmony, what makes everybody um, equal, is the fact that they are holding a bottle of Coke. In their hands right so it's the product again that um, allows for this communalism to occur uh, this is also the beginning of the age of niche marketing the 1970s are the beginning of the age of niche marketing uh, in which products get marketed to African Americans teenagers uh, women of a certain age so there is all this uh, sociological research to break up the mass society the mass uh, consuming self of the previous decades in all these uh, subcategories and subclusters. So my question for you is pretty simple. It's an exercise. Look for an ad, uh, perhaps from the 1970s. You can go and Google 1970s um, ads, commercials, or 60s and 70s, in which uh, difference is uh, celebrated, right? And is it celebrated in opposition uh, to something or someone else? Or is it celebrated for itself? Is it celebrated as a coming together with differences of differences? How is difference mobilized um, in these ads, right? Uh, and then we will see um, tomorrow, in the discussion we will have tomorrow, how after the age of the mass consumption and the days of niche marketing, we have the age of individualized marketing that basically begins uh, with um, uh, social media in particular. Thank you very much.